Okay. So welcome to the, uh, the special talk on the occasion of uh, International Math Day uh, 2022 celebrations at ISER Pune. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to introduce Professor Nina Gupta from ISI Kolkata. Um, Nina primarily works in the areas of commutative algebra and affine algebraic geometry. She received her PhD in 2011 from ISI Kolkata. Um, and uh, she has made uh, many remarkable contributions to mathematics in a, a short span of time, including her uh, solution to the Zariski uh, cancellation problem. Uh, she has received many awards and accolades for her work, including the uh, Shanti Sharup Bhatnagar Award and the ICTP uh, Ramanujan Prize for Young Mathematicians. Uh, she's an invited speaker at this year's ICM. Um, so Nina, uh, the person is as admirable as Nina, the mathematician. Uh, I had the privilege of having her as a student in my class during her math days. Um, it makes me really happy and very proud to be able to present to her uh, to a new generation of students uh, uh, present here and listening to this over Zoom. Um, so uh, we look forward to her talk, uh, the title of which is On Finite Generation of Subalgebras of Polynomial Algebras. Uh, over to you, Nina. Thank you very much, Moinagda. You still remember those nice days when we were students and uh, so those were actually pretty good days. We were learning so many things. And fortunately, we were gifted by many good teachers. Still, we are learning, but then this is a self-learning process. But uh, as we learn, we learn from books, we learn from experts, we learn from our students. Uh, today, uh, I will talk on uh, another aspect of uh, commutative algebra, which is uh, regarding the finite generation of rings of polynomial rings. So, and uh, it is uh, another very important topic in commutative algebra. Uh, and uh, this is based on a joint work with uh, Amartya Kumar Datta and Nobuharu Onoda. He is a Japanese mathematician. I sure uh, Moinagda have met him. So, so today, Miss, uh, before beginning what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm sorry that it may become a bit technical. Uh, uh, so please, whoever has uh, switched on their mic, maybe they can put it on mute because it's disturbing to others. So it may become a bit technical towards the end, but uh, I will try to make it very elementary in the beginning. Uh, first, let me fix some notations. So I'm sure uh, people are familiar with the notion of uh, rings, field, uh, integral domains. So for me, all rings are commutative rings uh, with identity. K will always denote a field and K bar denotes the algebraic closure of the field K. Let C denote the field of complex numbers. And for domain, I mean integral domain. Means for short, I may just say domain. And K domains means integral domain containing K. For an integral domain, R contained in A. So both R and A are integral domain where R is contained inside A. This notation A equal to R square bracket N means uh, A is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in n variables over r. So a is equal to r t1, t2, tn for elements t1, t2, tn in a, which are algebraically independent over r. So this notation may be used uh, not quite often. So let me talk about Hilbert's 14th problem. Uh, we all know that Hilbert was a great mathematician of the 19th century. And he had listed a list of some 23 open problems in the first ICM 
in 1900, anticipating that uh, uh, some of his problems were actually vague, uh, anticipating the need of uh, those problems in the near future. And one of his problem was the Hilbert's potent problem. Let me also mention that Hilbert was the, uh, you can also say he, he was a visionary. You know, see, the kind of problems he has listed uh, in ICM 1900, they actually led mathematician uh, what to do in the, in the 20th and 21st century. This whole of 20th and 21st century, we are guided by the problems of Hilbert and many new field of mathematics have developed and emerged from this problem. And this uh, problem of Hilbert actually originated from the uh, problem of a uh, uh, study of this uh, ring of invariance of a uh, group action. So at that time, this inv invariant theory was a very important problem and Gordon was the master of uh, the invariant theory for computing the invariant of uh, uh, group actions. So the natural question which came to them was whether the ring of invariant of a group action on a polynomial ring is finitely generated in an attempt to solve one of the special case, uh, Hilbert had proved this uh, Hilbert basis theorem, which has, which is now you can say the one of the pillars of commutative algebra and affine algebraic geometry because Hilbert basis theorem essentially means uh, rings where sub means rings, uh, any ideal of a polynomial rings is finitely generated. So that is the Hilbert basis theorem, which actually connected uh, which had made the study of, uh, I should say that that was a genesis of uh, commutative algebra, the beginning of the subject commutative algebra and Noetherian rings. So rings were, so Noetherian rings are essentially those whose uh, ideals are finitely generated. So this finite generation was an important topic. And so guided by this uh, invariant theory, Hilbert posed this problem. So he asked if L is a subring of the polynomial ring Kx on to Xn and A is an intersection of this field L with uh, this uh, polynomial ring Kx on to Xn, then it is natural that A will be contained inside Kx on to Xn. So Kx on to Xn, this is a polynomial ring in N variables. So clearly uh, A is sandwiched between K and a polynomial ring in N variables. So a natural question which arises, so A is certainly normal because it's the intersection of two normal domains, that is integrally closed domain. A natural question which arose is that, is A necessarily finitely generated over K? And uh, so he put this problem as it is, and the answer is yes, if N is equal to one, we will see a proof of this uh, in the next two slides, that uh, any subring of Kx1 is finitely generated. The proof requires a little bit of commutative algebra. Maybe we can, um, we can just uh, skip if you are not comfortable. But it's uh, easy if we have a basis of uh, any basic knowledge of a uh, uh, commutative algebra. However, for n equal to two, uh, you need to put an extra assumption that a is normal, which which already Hilbert had proved. So. Zariski proved that in 1954 that if the transcendence degree of this field L over K is less than or equal to two, then the answer is yes. And his result was much more general what Hilbert wanted. He took, he said that if B is any finitely generated normal K domain and L is a subfield of uh, the quotient field of B, so QB is a quotient field of B and transcendence degree of L over K is less than or equal to two, then L intersection B is finitely generated over K. So this was a Zariski's result. So it was much more general. You, even you can take B to be any ring, finitely generated normal K domain. However, we have counter examples to the Hilbert's quoting problem. You can say that uh, this problem is till date uh, completely solved. Uh, so this is, so this was the problem. L is a sub field of uh, the field of rational functions xn up to xn and a is the intersection of uh, the polynomial ring intersection with l then this is the chart which uh, gives you the complete solution of the hilbert's quoting problem because 
we know that if the transcendence degree of L over K is equal to two, then Z by Zeriski's result, that, uh, that has an affirmative answer. So there are now counter examples in higher dimensions. The first ever counter example was given by Nagata. So Nagata's ring was highly complicated. It was involved 32 variables with a, and this L, this has transcendence degree four over K. So it was a huge ring. Uh, later, Paul Roberts constructed an example where this n is equal to four and transcendence degree of L over K is six. Uh, this uh, example two, three, four, means they are actually very important examples because this is just not an counter example to the Hilbert's protein problem, the original Hilbert's protein problem. They also, these examples also arose as a ring of invariant of some group action. So this, uh, in fact, uh, one is also a ring of invariant of a group action. Here the group is a higher dimensional GA and here it is the group GA. So that is a K plus. So Paul Robert uh, gave an example in dimension N equal to seven, where this is the ring of invariant of a GA action on polynomial ring in seven variables. Later, Frodenberg uh, generalized Robert's example and reduced the dimension and soon Degley and Frodenberg reduced the dimension further. So this lower dimension cases were open and uh, Kuroda, a Japanese mathematician, he took over this and constructed examples in n equal to four and three, where the transcendence degree of L over k is three and three itself. So this is the complete story of Hilbert's coating problem. Now there are other problems which we can think about like uh, the original invariant theory that whether these lower dimensional examples can you construct as a ring of invariant of a group action. So of course, uh, uh, this three, three is not possible. So the only possibility is that four and three, that N equal to four and transcendence degree of L over K is three. So this is the only possibility where you can ask whether you can have a ring of invariant of a GA action, which is not finitely generated. So this is where the Hilbert's protein problem lies in. Now, let me come back to the uh, special case uh, of a Hilbert's protein problem. So this is what we will be doing today. So let K be a field and X be an indeterminate over K, a subring of the polynomial ring KX containing K, and A is this subring. Then a natural question like Hilbert, we can ask whether A is necessarily finitely generated K algebra. So when K is a field, and in this case, we can actually give a proof. So answer is yes. And here it is the proof. So the for the proof, uh, you just take an element F, so, okay, so this proof is accessible to any MSc student. So if there is an undergrad student, they may just uh, look at the kind of problems we deal with or how the research progresses. So once you know something is known, how can you ask more better questions or another questions out of a given problem? So this was a, this is something which is well known or you can say it is an MSc in math exercise. So you take an element F in A, which is not in K, then uh, A will be sandwiched between the subring KF and KX. So one thing I observe is that this KX is a finite KF model because your X will satisfy an integral equation over KF. So this is KX is a finite KF model and hence, and this becomes, this is a Noetherian ring. So this is a Noetherian finite extension. And hence, uh, an either in KF model. Therefore, A is a finitely generated KF model because it's a sub, sub model of an either in model. And hence, a finitely generated K algebra. So, this is the proof. So, this, uh, uh, so this uh, completes the argument. Now, uh, so this is what you know. So, how do you generalize? So, the next question you would ask is how about adding one more variable? and Assume A is a subring of K and KXY. Can you ask a similar question? Is A necessarily finitely generated K algebra? 
In this case, the answer is clearly no, because you can uh, consider a subring of this type, x, x, y, x, y square, x, y cube, x, y to the power n. So this is a subring and uh, it requires a little bit of effort that you can show that this sub -ring, this ring A is not a finitely generated K-algebra. It will require a little bit of effort because if you try to prove it generated by finitely many elements, F1, F2, Fn, then this uh, all these coefficients of uh, y to the power n involves only x, no higher power of x. So on x times y to the power n, you may not be able to get. So that's the proof. So, but something which is not so easy to see is that this ring A is not even Noetherian. So Noetherian rings are those whose every ideals are finitely generated. So if the ring A is not Noetherian, it is certainly not a finitely generated K algebra. So finitely generated K algebra implies Noetherian. So this ring is not even Noetherian. Uh, it's not a finite, not even Noetherian. So Noetherian and hence not even. So this not even Noetherian, you need a little bit of effort to prove. So the next question which you may ask is that, okay, suppose I assume this subring A is Noetherian. Is then A necessarily finitely generated K algebra? So the, here again, the answer is no. And it was a research paper by Ikin in 1972. He constructed an example of a ring A, where A is Noetherian, but not a finitely generated K algebra. So this uh, example of Ikin is uh, a bit technical and non-trivial. So this is what it's uh, that you cannot generalize it in higher dimensions. So generalizing by increasing number of variables, the problem actually stops. So you already have a counterexample. So there is another way of asking questions. So this is a generalization that how about replacing the field K by a ring R and just uh, one variable. So let R be a ring and X be an indeterminate and A is a subring of the polynomial ring Rx containing R. Is then A necessarily finitely generated R algebra? So this is how maths progress, right? Ms. Once you have a result or a theorem or a counterexample, you try to formulate another questions, Let's formulate relevant and questions out of it. So this curiosity leads to this question. And now what? So now answer again is no, because here again, miss this the first example, which I said this uh, Kx. So this X, you can Kx. Uh, so this ring A contains the subring Kx. So this is what you can do. You can take R to be the CT. C is the field of complex numbers and T being indeterminate and consider this subring Tx, Tx square, Tx cube. So this is not Noetherian. However, Ikin, so that same example of Ikin actually also gives a counter example to this problem. So that example of Ikin is Noetherian, but not a finitely generated K adapter. So this is the problem and now what? So we may modify the question. Can you find a minimal sufficient condition under which A is necessarily a finitely generated R algebra? So you can see that just adding Noetherian will not be enough because there the subring is not finitely generated. So what is the minimal sufficient condition? Here again, there is a remarkable result due to Abhyankar, Ikin, and Heinzer. This is a famous paper where he proved that if you assume that this subrings R and A are unique factorization domain, then A is actually a polynomial ring. So it's very, very strong result that uh, for this not even, this, this is finitely generated, it's actually generated by just one more element. So, but you need to have the assumption that R and A are both unique factorization domain then A is actually a polynomial ring. So this was the remarkable result due to Abhankar, Ikin, and Heinz. So this, uh, this is what you know. And now, how do you work? So the next thing, what you would do is that, uh, is there another sufficient condition? So this is a very strong assumption, probably, that forces A to be a polynomial ring is probably a stronger assumption. So can we reduce the assumption? So this was a result due to Datta and Onoda. 
uh, Amartya Kumar Dutta and Nagar Onoda, who actually led to the uh, our follow-up work. So they proved that if R is a complete discrete valuation ring over the complex numbers, so it is essentially the C power series T and A is a Noetherian ring, then A is actually finitely generated. So this example of Akin, so their study actually began by studying the example of Akin. So when they were studying the example of Akin, they were actually wondering where is it this counter example actually, this counter example is existing. So they realized that uh, you need to have a complete ring C power series T and that too where C is an algebraically closed field. So that led him to prove this theorem. So actually their results were much more general. So what they proved is that if R is a complete discrete valuation ring with a, a regular parameter pi and the residue field K, then, and suppose this algebraic closure so of K bar of K, so K is that residue field. So that K bar of K is in finite extension of K. So if you assume that, then if you know a little bit of field theory would say that, then this must be the case that K bar over K must be less than equal to K. So these are called real, real closed field. So K is either algebraically closed or real closed field. And K be a Noetherian domain containing R such that A pi inverse is a finitely generated K algebra and transcendence degree of A over R is one, then A is finitely generated over. So here the assumption is not that a is a subring of Rx. So all you need to know is that A pi inverse is finitely generated and transcendence degree of A over R is one. Both these conditions are actually uh, supplied to you once you assume that A is a subring of Rx. So in particular, we have this result that if A is a Noetherian CT subalgebra of a CT power series Tx, then A is finitely generated over CT. That is, if uh, A is sandwiched like this, then A is finitely generated over algebra, CT algebra. And uh, so what you recall is that uh, uh, just now we have proved that if B is a subring uh, of K and Kx, then B is a finitely generated K algebra. So therefore, if uh, capital K is a C power is T, T inverse, that is, then this is a field because it's a discrete valuation ring so with only regular parameter t. So if we invert t, this becomes a field. So in, in this, uh, if I invert t, then at inverse is a finitely generated uh, capital K algebra. And of course, the transcendence degree of a over this is one, less than equal to one. So we can apply the general result of Dutta Onoda and see that this ring a is a finitely generated CT algebra. So once this has been proved, they also proved this result that uh, if, uh, when is this Noetherian? So this was a theorem. So what about if uh, instead of one indeterminate T, you have two indeterminate. So it's a, a complete ring of uh, dimension two and A is Noetherian. Is then A necessarily finitely generated over R? So here the answer is no, we have constructed that example. And now another problem which they have studied is that, uh, so over a locally factorial domain, so that means R is locally factorial Noetherian domain, such that A is Noetherian and every prime ideal P of height one in R remains a prime ideal in A, then A is finitely generated over R. And the normalization of A is isomorphic to the symmetric algebra of an invertible ideal of R. So this was a, you can say it's a generalization of uh, Abhankar, Ikin and Heinzer. So Abhankar, Ikin and Heinzer was R and A are both unique factorization domain. So if you don't want to assume unique factorization domain, you assume that R is locally unique factorization domain. So this actually involves a bigger class of rings, uh, all Redekin domains and are there. So, and then you also don't assume that A to be normal. So if you, then we have this result. So they also proved that over a complete discrete valuation ring. So this is a necessary condition for something to be Noetherian with the field of fractions capital K. 
If A is a cool domain containing R such that A pi inverse is a finitely generated K algebra and transcendence degree of A over R is one, then A is finitely generated, provided the transcendence degree of A mod P is positive for every associated prime ideal P of pi A. And uh, so we have this generalization of the Tanoda's result that uh, over a complete two dimensional regular local ring with a residue field K, uh, suppose K bar of K is a finite extension of K and A is a Noetherian domain containing R such that uh, A is a flat R algebra with transcendence degree of A over R is one. Further, we assume that uh, these two conditions, so uh, it, I understand that there are a lot of conditions and it may make uh, the things much more complicated, but uh, believe me that they are easy provided we have a little bit of background of commutative algebra, that A pi inverse is a finitely generated R pi inverse algebra and this transcendence degree is positive for every associated prime ideal P of pi A, then A is finitely generated. In particular, so this is a special case where you can see that very minimum conditions are assumed. So when R is uh, C power series uh, UV and A is Noetherian flat, such that uh, these two conditions are satisfied, then A is finitely generated. So this is uh, what we could achieve. And uh, now this is that example where uh, so where this condition is basically does not hold that transcendence degree of A mod P is positive for every associated prime ideal P of pi. So this is where this stops. So let Pn denote the nth prime number for n greater than zero and let L equal to this. Uh, so this is the square root of V, this is cube root of V and so on. So we keep on adding all the p, p and pth root of v, where p is a prime number. So, and then let uh, then it's easy to see that L is an infinite algebraic extension of this field, and and you construct these elements x naught, which is u times x, x one, x n, and let d be this. Uh, subring so so this is a subring of uh, um, l uh, means basically c u v and u inverse times x x is an indeterminate and a be this rx intersection d then a is a subring of r and rx and this subring is noetherian it is normal it is faithfully flat but it is not finitely generated over R. So this requires a little bit of work to show that this is not finitely generated. And essentially it's basically that uh, this condition is not satisfied. That transcendence degree of A mod P is positive for every system time. So now this is uh, another result of uh, Datta and Unoda about cool subrings of Rx. So they proved that if in A is a subring of R and R, subring of Rx, R is one dimensional Noetherian domain and A is a cool domain, then A is necessarily Noetherian domain. And we showed that, okay, uh, in higher dimension, even over the ring C power says UV, cruel domain does not imply Noetherian. So there, in one dimensional case, cruel domain implies Noetherian. In two dimensional case, uh, even in very nice situation where you have complex numbers and complete ring, cruel domain will not imply Noetherian. So Noetherian is a stronger assumption here. And this, are, this is the example. So another similar sort of example but with a little bit of twist. So here U and V are indeterminants and Pn denotes the nth prime number. And let Qn is the product of Pi's. Let S be the union, this is basically the direct limit of uh, all this uh, discrete evaluation ring CV1 by QN. Uh, so it's an infinite integral extension of this uh, ring C power series V generated by the 
unth root of v. And if I consider these elements and this auxiliary ring D and A be the ring D intersection Rx, then A is not, is a not an Eulerian ring, but it's a full subring of Rx. So thank you. And this is the end. I am not uh, giving you the proofs because the proof may become a bit complicated. Even the results were a bit technical, but uh, the message which I would like to convey is that uh, how this research progresses, that uh, once you know some result or some theorems, then the idea is to ask for new questions and new results, new questions. And it has huge significance because you, you should always have criteria for some rings to be finitely generated or neither in because, the, because of the problems in invariant theory. So in invariant theory, the first question is to study the ring of invariant. And the first question which we en encounter is whether the ring of invariant is something which you can handle, whether it is finitely generated or not. So, so thank you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So let's uh, thank Nina for a great talk. I think I stopped it very early, so it was a quick talk. Uh, that's okay. So are there any questions for Nina? Uh, are there any questions on the... Anybody on uh, Zoom can also unmute and ask a question if there is one. No, so I have just a, okay, we are looking at the Zoom and let's see if there is. Okay, so no questions there. So, uh, yeah, so just a uh, curiosity, like, uh, so basically you have, uh, you are working with, uh, you know, like now power series ring in two variables and you uh, showed many results to us. Uh, how difficult is this process like of like going to, you know, like one more variable from there and have you ever thought about? Actually, yeah. So. Uh, power series ring is something uh, uh, I is a very natural thing I should have chosen because power series ring. So what we are doing is that we are constructing a sort of sequence, and so power series ring uh, topologically they are complete rings with respect to some topology. So this emetic topology and uh, that example of Ikin which he had constructed. So that was something that. Uh, that you need some sort of convergence. So that is why this Ekin's example was not finitely generated. So this is something which Datta and Unoda, they have pointed, understood, and they realized that if we move to power series ring, things are probably better. And that is why they have that affirmative answer that if you have power series ring in one indeterminate, then the things are better, then the rings are finitely generated, noetherian. So Power series ring is actually, a, uh, we should expect that things would be better. But uh, unfortunately, moment I increase one more variable, it's, it's falling back. So now we can ask other questions like uh, uh, this condition. So basically, this condition. So this is the condition that this transcendence degree of A mod T is positive. So this is actually a necessary condition. This is very necessary for the ring to be finitely generated. And in this case, it turned out to be sufficient also. So the point is that uh, once you have this, uh, this condition, can we replace it with something which is more uh, 
lucrative or miss which is more accessible because computing associated primes is not always easy so can we have something more uh, fundamental kind of uh, condition for this uh, subring to be finitely right of course when you work with polynomial ring uh, this uh, certainly is not going to happen this, this uh, you will always get a counter example which is not finitely right so i hope i have been able to answer your question was that this question or yeah yeah sure yeah yes uh, that was the question so pow uh, power series ring is actually we should expect that the things will be better so that was uh, the turn order's result so this is where yeah so this is uh, that uh, result of uh, the turn order that over power series ring and a noether and implies finitely joint so and over ct it is not so therefore the question okay so uh, yeah thank you uh, thank you uh, yeah, for your answer and so uh, let's uh, we we appreciate the time uh, and effort that you uh, invested in you know uh, 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 giving this talk and uh, in spite of uh, many other engagements so thank I you nina you. and thank i hope uh, one day you'll be able to visit uh, iser pune in person yeah, i visited iser pune several times at least oh two. you did <laughs> okay so, and uh, thank you, Miss. Uh, actually, Miss, I remember you once asked me, "Will it? Will you be open for an interview, or would you like to give a talk?" <coughs> so I thought it's giving a talk is much better, but uh, uh, because that at least uh, reflects the maths culture which we do. Uh, yeah. And uh, interviews are something which probably mathematicians are always scared of. At least <laughs> I'm scared of it. But if it is a mathematics question, we can think and ask and have curiosity. So that that actually helps. So if if there are further questions, I am free free to answer them. But uh, it, I hope it should not be very difficult. So I I guess today we don't have any more questions. So a big round of applause for Nina again. Thank you. Thank you.